In this video, we'll take a look at one more example involving asymptotes. So we're going to consider the function g defined by g of x equals e to the x cosine x and ask, does the, does the graph of this function have any asymptotes? Now, we have access to these great graphing calculators, so we might as well use the calculator to try to draw a graph of the function. So if I use the, uh, cal the programming application on my computer and ask it to graph g of x, uh, we get something looking like this. Okay. Now, it's never a bad idea to graph a function when you start to work with it. It might give it some idea of behavior. In uh, this case, it looks like perhaps the function flattens out over here on the left as x tends towards minus infinity. So that may suggest a horizontal asymptote. And we see here the function going down towards infinity, towards minus infinity at about minus 10. And maybe that suggests that there's a vertical asymptote here. We'll see that one of these two assertions is true and the other is false. Uh, the, one of the points of this example is to uh, have you develop a sense of caution about your graphics calculator. Uh, they're great tools, but they can also be deceiving and they often will show misleading information. And in fact, uh, for this particular graph, for this particular function g, it's almost impossible to get a good informative graph on your graphing calculator. The graph, of course, that seems to suggest a horizontal asymptote and maybe a vertical asymptote. Uh, here's another version of the graph. Uh, kind of hard to know what's going on here. Uh, is this showing us lots of vertical asymptotes here? Or is the calculator and, or, or graphics program just gone crazy? What's, what's going on in this case? Okay. So uh, in analyzing these things, uh, the calculator can be helpful, but you really have to know something more about the, the function itself being graphed, and uh, that involves putting some thought into the functions uh, involving some work that can't really be done with a calculator. So the function e to the x cos x is a product of two functions that are both continuous on the real line. So that means g of x is continuous on the entire real line, and that means there are no vertical asymptotes. So the continuity, which means the function must be smooth, no big jumps, etc., uh, tells us there are no vertical asymptotes. This holds for continuity on the whole real line. Okay. Now, if we consider the graphs of the two elementary functions in the product, they are the cosine graph and the exponential graph. So uh, we can look at these graphs and think about the function g is formed by multiplying the y values for these two functions together. For each x value, take the product of the y values. Okay. Now as x grows in the positive direction, we see that the cosine function that just oscillates between plus 1 and minus 1, so the cosine stays in this range, plus 1 to minus 1. Okay. And the exponential function, well as you know from uh, algebra, exponential functions grow well exponentially. So this function is rapidly growing uh, off to infinity. So as x gets larger, e to the x gets larger. So this, this is in the uh, positive x direction. So we tend, we're, we're going off to infinity here. And uh, we also see back here in the negative direction, we know the exponential uh, does have a horizontal asymptote in the negative direction. We see evidence of that in the graph. So we're going to worry about the limit in the positive infinity direction first. And uh, what the product does is we have the exponential rising, but when we multiply that by the cosine, also between plus and minus 1, this is going to induce some oscillations in the product. You can kind of get a feel for what this looks like. This is not accurate, but you're going to see these oscillations going something like this, up and down, and kind of really following 
the graph of the exponential. Okay? Although, again, it's hard to produce a graphics calculator picture that actually shows this. And here's that previous graph. So we now know that uh, these things over here are indic indicative of oscillations. So you're seeing the influence of the cosine function. And again, as we mentioned earlier, these oscillations get bigger and bigger as we move out in the x direction. That's because we're multiplying the cosine by larger and larger values with the exponential. So these things really should be topping off, moving down, back up, etc., like this. And actually, each oscillation is much bigger than the one before it. So again, this picture we've sketched in here is not really accurate. But So these are not really vertical asymptotes we're seeing here, but rather oscillations. And, we're, and for some reason, the computer has cut off these oscillations. But that's really what's going on. So, move on to the next slide. So I've reproduced that graph here. Uh, so this, these are the, the oscillations saw hinted in the previous graph. That's these things. Now, again, let's look at another picture. If we uh, force the graphing program to show the entire range, that is the entire y output for values between minus 100 and 100, this is what the graph looks like. Okay. Now, again, these two graphs look, look very, very different. What's going on here? Well, again, let's uh, talk about this. It turns out that the large y values on the very last oscillation that's here are so much bigger than all the previous oscillations that they get washed out because of the scale. These oscillations are there. You can kind of see one of them down here, a negative one. But the others are so small in relation to this last one, the one at about 100, that there just isn't available room or scale to actually show the graph. So there's lots of oscillations in here in this interval. And in fact, even back here too, we're just not seeing that. And of course, when you look at the numbers on the y-axis here, the order of 10 to the 43rd versus 10 to the 13th here, you can see that, that the scaling makes a problem. So with this discussion, we can conclude that uh, because of these oscillations, back and forth, getting larger and larger, some negative, some positive, as is shown over here, that this limit as x cos infinity to the e to x cos x does not exist. And in that case, this tells us there is no horizontal asymptote in the positive direction. So we have uh, eliminated the possibility of uh, vertical asymptotes because the function is continuous for all real numbers, and we now see there is no horizontal asymptote in the positive infinity direction, so we only have to work or take a look at the negative infinity direction. Okay. So again, here's the graphs of the two pieces that make up the, the product, and we now see, as we mentioned earlier, that when x is large and negative, the exponential is getting close to zero. So in fact, if you look at the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x, the negative, the large negative x as x is to negative infinity puts this exponential denominator, so it, it really does tend towards zero. Okay. The exponential puts the calculation in a reciprocal, one over what would be e to the minus x, one over a large number, which, which tends towards zero. Okay. So because the values of the cosine also stay between minus 1 and 1, we see that as x tends towards infinity, or minus infinity, excuse me, that uh, we're multiplying e to the x, which is very small, times the cosine of x, between minus 1 and 1. And of course, a small number multiplied by a number between minus 1 and 1 is again going to be small. Okay. So this uh, 
seems to imply to us that this product then is going to be getting small or heading towards zero as x again tends towards minus infinity. And indeed, that's our conclusion here. This limit is zero as x goes to minus infinity. So this graph has a horizontal asymptote in the negative direction. So this is the only asymptote for the graph of g of x equals e to the x cos x. And again, the lesson to take away from all this is uh, the graphs of these functions that we saw in previous slides didn't really help much. They were suggestive, but only by actually sitting down, thinking, doing some mathematics about the two contributing functions, cos and an exponential, and what happens when we take the product, can, could really arrive at, at the conclusions we wanted here.